Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 29, test fitting the side rod fastenings and modifying the running boards. The side rods are all held in place by some special nuts, and as well as being threaded, they also have a taper pin that holds them in place. As you can see from this clip, the taper pin isn't a very good fit in the nut, and the other thing is, when the nut is screwed all the way onto the end of the crank pin, it doesn't line up with the hole in the crank pin. The first thing I'm going to do is to fit some new taper pins, and here they are. I'm just checking which side they fit. Yes, it fits this way. It's a tapered pin in a tapered hole. When I commence final assembly of these parts, I'm going to make some special washers, and these washers will limit the travel of the side rods. As you can see, there's a big gap between the position of where the nuts are and the actual side rod bush. All I'm doing in this video is just checking the fits of the nuts on the crank pins. They're not a very tight fit, and I could cheat and lock tight them on, but I'm not going to do that. The taper pins will hold them in position, once I find the position. When I find the position for the nut on each of the crank pins, I will tap the taper pin firmly in place, mark the correct length for each taper pin, and then remove them and cut them to size. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise to my viewers. The last video had a bit of an error in it. I use a video editor called Final Cut Pro X, and it's very good, except for one minor problem with it. If while you're editing you accidentally press the V key on the keyboard, that cancels anything that's highlighted, which is what I did in the last video. That's why there's one line of narration that's missing. Anyway, I fixed it, but I didn't re-upload the video because I would have spent the rest of the day replying to viewers and explaining why the original video had disappeared and a new one was in its place. Anyway, it's on with the show. I'm going to modify the running boards because I don't like this arrangement. The running boards actually split over the cylinders, so if you wanted to do any work on the cylinders, you would have to take off the entire running board and the cab, etc. I'm going to shorten both of the running boards and put a piece in from about here to the front. I put the first pencil mark in the wrong place. This is where the cylinder ends. I need to put the mark a little bit further back. That's because I need to fit a support plate and I didn't want the cylinder to get in the way. Here I'm just taking note of the measurement of the second line so I can apply that to the other side. And now, without further ado, it's over to the bandsaw and I'm cutting off the piece that I don't want. Although I'm only showing cutting one side, I cut both sides on the bandsaw. As you can see from this clip, both of the running boards are now shorter. The next part of the job is quite fiddly. By a process of measuring and comparing and measuring again, with a bit of luck I should be able to make a front extension to the running board at this side that clears both the snifting valve and the main steam inlet. This is very thin steel, so I didn't want to risk damaging it by putting it in the milling machine and milling across it. I could have held a sandwich of thicker steel plate and the thinner steel plate in the milling machine, but I prefer to do it this way because it's good practice and you'll see what I'm doing as we go along. I constantly get comments from so-called experts who watch my videos. Once again, these videos are designed for beginners. The experts tell me, well, I wouldn't do it that way, I'd do it this way and I'd do it that way, but I'm doing it this way because it's good practice for a beginner to learn how to use a file. Here's a piece of metal in the vise in the outer part of the workshop and I'm using a round file to round off the bottom of the slot. I'm doing something wrong here on purpose. I have the piece of steel too far out of the vise, so it's making a horrible squealing noise. When you do jobs like this on thin metal, make sure that the piece of metal is as low in the vise as you can get it. And also, you will notice that the vise jaws have a couple of pieces of brass angle fitted. This is just to prevent the vice jaws from making marks on the steel. In this clip I'm using quite a fine flat file to remove the saw marks from the edges of the slot. I think it's time to speed up the video. You should get the idea of what I'm doing by now. Filing is an art and you need to practice any art to make it work. And yes, the milling machine would be a quicker option, but I didn't have a milling machine when I was a beginner. Besides, by using the saw and file method, a very similar result is obtained, the part fits perfectly. Now it's time to make a large hole in the centre of this piece of steel to accommodate the main steam inlet pipe at this side. I'm arriving at the position of this specially shaped piece of the casting by just measuring and comparing. These are stepped hole cutters, very useful things to have in the workshop. And I'm going to use the largest one to drill a hole the correct diameter in the piece of steel 
hopefully in the right place to accommodate the main steam pipe. It's better to use oil when doing this job, but for the purposes of the video I didn't bother, because underneath the steel plate is a piece of mahogany. That's what the brown stuff is. Plus this small piece of steel plate isn't very thick and the cutter is going through it very easily. When I put too much pressure on, the chuck stops because the drilling machine belts are always left slack and this often saves snapping off small drills. Here's the finished product over the hole and it's very good, it's near enough for rock and roll anyway. In this clip I'm marking the position where I need to cut the piece of steel and once I cut this it will be the same length as the piece of metal at the front of the smoke box. I've made two of these. They are steel plates that I intend to rivet under the longest part of the running board to support the short part over the cylinder, which will be held in place by a couple of short countersunk bolts. When I clamp everything together using a spring clamp, as you can see, it looks quite good. In this clip, I've also clamped in place the side valence. Underneath the running board at this side, there's a lever that operates the drain cocks. At this side only, I will need to shorten the piece of metal that I cut to fit underneath, because it's currently too long and it fouls the lever. Why didn't I make one for the other side in this episode? Well, to be honest I did, but it didn't work out, I wasn't happy with it. So I need to go up to Blackgate's engineering and buy another piece of steel. And I'll get it right the second time. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.